What's up guys, we're gonna get right into it. Um, today's video is pretty much gonna be entirely revolving around the Cressida. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that have been done over the last four years since the uh, last update video. The last video has been um, over, uh, about four and a half years ago. Um, and I really have kind of put this thing really, really on the back burner. Um, I've put very little time into it in the grand scheme of things. Um, I have finished a couple of things, or at least gotten a couple of things really close to done. Um, I know I've said that for a very, very long time, probably said that a million times throughout the this entire build, but um, it, it's true this time. So um, we do have a couple of things that are pretty damn close. Uh, there was a couple of, uh, little stints here and there where I decided to uh, put my head down and really just work. I didn't film anything, and this is probably a couple years ago, um, where I put my head down, just spent probably, you know, a hundred or so hours on, on the car uh, here and there, where I would just try and bang a couple things out and really get things as perfect as I could get them. Um, I spent a lot of time and, uh, you know, tried to even hire out some work uh, to try and get a couple of things done. Uh, I had a friend that was helping me out with the fender flares and he did really good work. It was just, uh, we were fighting the fender flares for so long. We were trying to get them thickened up uh, so that way it would look kind of good and even all the way across, but then we would try and kind of smooth them out and we would just be chasing our tail where we wouldn't have enough thickness of the fiberglass and then there would be the filler to try and thicken up, but then we would try and make it fit to the body and just trying to get it to fit good and be the thickness we wanted to make it nice and even was just a nightmare and we were chasing our tail just over and over kind of doing the same thing where we would make one part good and then another part we would have to sand into and then we'd sand past the fiberglass into filler work and then obviously there'd be no structure there so it was really just not fun at all and that's kind of where i stopped last was where the entire body of the car is pretty damn close. Just trying to get the fender flares done. Um, the fender flares were never meant to be like perfect or really like, you know, solid body work. You know, they just, even in Japan, they don't look super good. They're kind of really wavy. That's kind of how these are. I'm just trying to make them good, but also, you know, um, keep somewhat authentic. Um, but yeah, so I'll show you those fender flares in a little bit. Uh, there has been a lot of time put into them. It's just, it doesn't look like it because again, we were just kind of chasing our tail doing the same things over and over, just trying to get them as good as possible. But um, I kind of finally came to a conclusion, maybe just, um, maybe a couple months ago on, on a direction that I want to take this thing. It was always kind of a possibility, but it was something that I didn't really want to do because it's not really the authentic way of doing things. So I finally kind of took this thing out of its storage space, still kind of sitting here with the plastic on it. We try and keep things uh, a little bit cleaner, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the plastic. I'll show you a couple of things. We'll take the uh, fender flares out of storage and then I'll kind of show you what we've been doing. So I'm sure you can notice the blue tape that's all over this car. Um, that's mainly just so we didn't mess up the bodywork underneath it while we were messing around with the flares. Um, but also you may see these little black things in here. That's like a, um, a rubber rib nut kind of thing. Um, and that was because of the initial way that we were going to uh, attach the fender flares to the car. Um, initially I wanted to use rivets, which is I think the most like traditional authentic way that they do it. Doing something like that it was most likely going to uh, pop the bodywork underneath not an option. I then switched to what we have now, which is the more modern style with the uh, rubber rib nuts, which is much more like what they use on a lot of the uh, Rocket Bunny kits and the modern wide body kits in general. Um, but we're gonna be pulling all that stuff out because the plan is to mold the body kit. I really wanted to avoid that for a lot of reasons. One is because whenever something gets messed up, inevitably, um, it's basically going to be the whole car is going to have to get repainted unless somehow I think that I can, um, you know, do a blend on a super flaked out paint job. Blending a uh, flake into, you know, the rest of the flake paint job is going to be a nightmare. Um, but with the way that the flares have been going, um, that's kind of our best option. Um, another thing is that um, it, because this is a four door, uh, it complicates the situation with the rear fender flare because it does go over the rear quarter and over the uh, rear door. So that's gonna have to uh, kind of be cut and you know molded in and then also be able to open and close the door, which is gonna add more work 
but um, I think it's kind of just the best way to do things here and it's going to be um, a little bit easier on me in the end um, but absolutely is kind of scary figuring that if something does get messed up on the car if you know we pop a tire or something and it you know messes up the fender flare I mean it's going to take you know a lot with it and again repainting it is going to be a nightmare I mean it's basically repainting the whole car first one we got here is the uh, passenger side front um, we'll take a closer look at it I'll throw some b-roll in there but uh, if you can tell there is a tremendous amount of fiberglass work that has happened here so we basically from the beginning these never fit good they were terrible I had to cut them basically in half and all this was new um, from there trying to fit them and everything else like I said we were uh, bringing the thickness down on here trying to get them to be the thickness we wanted putting filler on the back side to make sure it fit with the body but then burning through the fiberglass which is all of our structure so at some point uh, between myself and a friend I just realized I am not in frame at all is that better? Alright. Anyways, um, this entire section here that you can see is all exposed uh, fiberglass has all been redone. This entire thing uh, was all redone and we got fiberglass that's up to about a quarter inch thick down to maybe a little bit less. Um, so obviously we can do a little bit more or something just to uh, figure it out but realistically once these are molded to the car um, they're going to be super rigid because the way that we're going to mold it to the car is with panel bond and fiberglass so super strong adhesive and then more structure behind it um, so this is one of four that has had just an absolute tremendous amount of time and work put into it um, even though it really doesn't look like it this thing has just been nothing but a headache Then the driver's side or passenger side uh, rear, same exact thing. All of this has been taken down and uh, reinforced with several layers of fiberglass to be nice and rigid, especially because this is where originally we were going to have our mounting points, it was right here. So we wanted this to be nice and strong because we didn't want our fender flares that we spent all this time and money on to fly off. Um, so same thing happened here um, and it's kind of funny because I haven't seen this stuff for so long this is kind of uh, reminding me of everything that we did um, and reminding me of kind of what I still have to do because I haven't taken a look at this stuff for a long time um, but yeah same thing pretty much all this is gonna be wavy it's fine it's gonna look all right I'm not really too worried about this body work here I'm more concerned about the way that it fits the body but now that we're gonna mold this stuff it's gonna make my life a lot easier so taking a look at the uh, driver's side front uh, same thing pretty much same position where we've got it all reinforced sand it back down ready to start doing our body work on this um, I'm gonna do the last fender flare because I think that is the one that needs the most amount of work yet all right, so taking a look at this one, which I thought it needed more work, but uh, just because of the fiberglass work that was done here last, which I will show you, um, this is how we were kind of reinforcing certain spots that were getting blown out. Um, we would sand them to where we got to, you know, as much fiberglass as possible, and then we would just layer a bunch of fiberglass, and then we would shape it from there, so that way we're shaping down the fiberglass, and then from there, we do our filler work to try and smooth everything out. But we want to make sure that everything is, you know, as structurally sound as possible. We don't want to be, you know, building these things out of uh, filler, basically. 
All right, now that we've addressed the fender flares, there's two other things that have happened since. Um, one thing I spent a lot of time on, the other thing I spent a lot of money on. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the front nose, which is something that I spent a lot of time making it as close to perfect as possible. There's probably a hair more work just to make it absolutely perfect. Now, taking a look at this hood, first glance, looks like nothing has been done since the last time we've seen it. The general shape is there, but obviously that doesn't translate over uh, film how you know good the gaps are and everything until you start to get really close. When you start to get close you see that the gaps here are almost perfect I mean just absolutely as close as you could ask for I think this one is a hair off but the other one is basically perfect if you could see the gap here is just a tiny bit bigger and it's just because you're fighting the bodywork here versus metal all the way through. So you're kind of sanding up against that, but you gotta keep and maintain this slight curve in. Um, and then also trying to keep the gap good as well. Um, so that needs a hair more work, but this I'd say is pretty much perfect. Another thing is with all the weight overhanging, this is attached to the car. You know, this is not going to budge with any sort of weight there. As soon as you start adding, you know, all this weight to the hood, usually it's gonna wanna sag. And then even at that, if you do bring it up or you adjust it or whatever, as soon as you start applying pressure to the hood to sand it, you're going to ultimately be sanding into your fender more because you're pushing down on the hood that has movement. Um, but if you take a look, it is, about as good as you could ask for. It is super flat, and this is with no support or anything underneath this hood other than the factory um, bump stops that are like right here. So it's got this, whatever, 14 inch overhang with all this extra weight, and man, is it just straight as can be. And then taking a look at this, there used to be a huge curve or bow in this hood going down to here on either side. I spent a ton, a ton of time trying to get that as flat as possible, all while trying to keep this thickness maintained all the way through. Just nothing but a headache, um, especially for someone like me, even though I've spent many, many hours on this car doing body work. I am not a body person. I'm not a professional. Um, this is me just trying to you know, do some crazy uh, additive body work to a car and then trying to make it as perfect as possible with basically no experience. You would think after all these years that I would have experience, but even at that, having experience with body work doesn't mean that you know, um, you know, kind of how to address the custom world. I know that things are a little bit different. You can't really uh, take a collision guy and throw him at this and expect him to uh, make things as good as possible. Ask me how I know. I have had two different body guys, uh, professional body guys, uh, work on this car. One guy, really good, good friend. He helped me out a lot. Um, it's just, you kind of take a different, uh, you know, direction at certain things, um, but still really, really good and really helpful. He's the one who helped me out on the fender flares tremendously, trying to burn through everything and, you know, get the fiberglass glass on there and just get those um, kind of going and, and do a, a good baseline again. The other one really did not do very well. Um, we really, uh, you know, I think had a different idea of what flat, straight, and, you know, good quality ready to paint bodywork was. So again, I am not a professional, but I have dealt with professionals. I think that there's kind of a different way of thinking, different way of doing things with something that's like this versus, you know, kind of something that's like a collision car. All right, last thing that we've gotten for this car, or I guess kind of the only thing we've gotten for this car since you've last seen it, is a new set of wheels. So these things have been sitting up here for a very long time. You could see the old set of the Mark Ones. Those ones from the beginning, um, I got them rebuilt and they are perfect, but the first tire shop that mounted the tires on there basically messed them up beyond repair. I tried to get them repaired uh, a couple of different times by a few different people. Basically, they need to be relept, otherwise they're useless. Um, I got these ones made um, probably a couple years ago now. They are re-lipped, re-powder coated, absolutely perfect. They were built by someone, uh, actually they were built by the same person that built the Miata wheels. And the Miata wheels have been absolutely perfect. They leak zero air over the last like 
seven or eight years that I've had those wheels. I'm really, really happy about these. And if you notice, we got five wheels here. So we have, I think they're 14 by like 10 and a half or something or 10s. I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. We'll use a little spacer if we need. But then we have a smaller, narrower one that is going to be our spare. So it's kind of cool that we have an extra wheel um, to, you know, throw in the back and do a little display or whatever. But uh, those things actually haven't even been on the car. I basically, for... Whenever I first got those, I opened one wheel up. I have enough confidence in the wheel builder that I didn't have to check all of them. I left the other ones in the boxes because that's honestly where they were safest at until we moved to this new warehouse where I was finally able to open them all up and kind of display them there, which is where they're probably going to stay for a good little bit now. Um, I may try and test fit them, but I really don't want to be screwing around with this stuff um, until we have tires on there. Really just no reason to be doing that. You're just asking to get stuff messed up. Now in this video, I'm at least going to take off the blue tape on this side and uh, go over the plan for uh, doing the molding. Um, the thing is, I almost don't even know exactly how I'm going to approach this yet. Um, I have an idea for the rear. The front is kind of going to be a pain because I know as soon as we cover this up with a fender flare, it's going to be an issue getting the bumper on and off. Um, and I know as well that there's uh, two bolts back here holding on the bumper. We might just have to not run those or hope that we can get to them from the backside or something. Um, actually, now that I think about it, that won't be a problem at all, especially if they're from the backside. Scratch that. Anyways, for the rear, uh, I absolutely could um, just go ahead and block off the rear door. Uh, the problem is, um, you know, one, getting paint back there, uh, and two, uh, you know, with right here where there's still the door gap from where the uh, fender flare isn't over it, um, it's going to kind of look weird. Um, I don't know. I don't really think that that's the direction I want to go. I feel like I want to make this thing as good as possible, especially after all these years. It's not worth cutting corners. So uh, the idea here is... Uh, well, let me take off this blue tape first and then we'll have a better idea of what we're looking at. I'm going to deal with the rest of the tape later. We'll throw that in as like a time lapse bonus clips for anyone who cares to watch. But to get to the point, um, basically, we're going to have to mount this on here, mold it on there. And then uh, if I can hold it up, Jesus. All right, one second. Alright, so the plan right now is to get rid of all of these, pull all those out. We're going to have to prep the underside. We'll mold this at some point or we'll cut it now, but I think we'll, the rears are a little bit different. We're going to have to figure out whether we're going to mold it, cut it first or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But essentially, the idea is almost like any other uh, wide body kit that is for a four door car where the flare, you know, goes over as we're going to, you know, cut it here and bring it down and like that. That is the initial idea. But uh, now that I take a look at this, it would be very easy because this car is kind of cut up and um, different underneath it. Um, because there's nothing for this to mount here anyways, the only thing would be right here. Um, we could, I think, save a little bit of time and energy and just cut across here, cut down here, and just this portion will swing out. This will put structure on the inside. This will put structure in the inside, same for the door. And uh, that would be very easy. And we'd have these two splits here. And again, we would just support these so that way this matches up nice. Um, those are our options. Either just straight, straight, make this kind of look good, make that kind of look good, or we would cut this so that way um, this would still be, you know, good in there. And then this would be um, molded to the door and this portion would be to the car. Um, I think that just this portion, you know, sticking with the door, I think that's going to look best. Um, but whether or not we have clearance whenever we open the door with this or what, 
um, is definitely going to add some level of difficulty. Um, but I think that that's probably the way I'd like to go. That was the initial idea. Right, something like that. But that's the idea. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. That's something to figure out. Um, along with why this isn't fitting all that well at the moment. Definitely a uh, two-person job holding this thing on there. Uh, but soon, honestly, I would almost rather prep this, mount the thing on there exactly how we want it, and then just over trim this going this way. And I think that that'll kind of give us some, some room to play with. And then we'll just try and match it on the other side. That's about it. Um, unfortunately, there hasn't been more done. Uh, there's still a lot to go. Um, I appreciate everyone who has stuck around this long to wait for it to be finished. Uh, my plan was to always um, have uh, footage of this car being completed when that happens. Um, the plan was to have a backlog and then release it. Um, but as of late with the support of the last video, obviously it seems like people actually want me to post on a somewhat regular basis. So as of right now, I'm going to try to at least do every other week. Um, I think that's something that I can accomplish relatively easily and still have something to show, um, with the amount of time that I'm actually going to be able to have to work on this. So I'm going to try and stick to that. We're going to stick to every other week and then as i you know see things progress both on the channel and on the car maybe we'll get things moving a little quicker um that's the idea but you know how this goes um i don't want to get anyone's hopes up um that's pretty much why the original plan was to just have a huge backlog of footage if and when this car gets done and then release that stuff on a pretty regular basis once we know that the car is done so we're not really like screwing around with people's time and stuff because it really does suck i mean it sucks for me to to have to film this stuff and then you know edit it and post it and you know kind of be like well that's you know several hundred hours of work and you know you got barely anything to show for it so um it definitely it's it's not super fun um i definitely have more of a passion for it now i definitely lost interest in it and that's why we had a little bit of a hiatus for about three-ish years on this thing but i hope you guys can recognize that there has been some progress some good solid work that's gone towards this thing to get it a lot closer so um getting you know the fender flares you know, taken care of, you know, kind of making that leap towards, um, you know, focusing on trying to get them molded and then go from there and then do the body work on that, I think is going to be the right direction. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's going to be some, you know, little touch-ups here and there. And then basically after that, we'll have to take care of all the stuff I have up there, which is all of the body parts. So we have the, uh, the lip, the wing, um, the other lip and the oil cooler and, you know, a couple other things that really are going to be a good chunk of work in it of themselves. But that's something that can be done after the body of the car is done. Um, so I'm really hoping, oh, and the side skirts and the thing on the bottom and in the rear. Honestly, I don't even remember what half this stuff is called anymore. Um, but yeah, realistically, there's a lot, a lot of work to be done. Um, we're heading into winter. If you don't know, I'm uh, located in Illinois, so our winters are pretty rough. It's not really much worth doing outside. So uh, hopefully that'll keep me in here and uh, slaving away on uh, the body work here. Um, meanwhile, we have, uh, you know, James and a couple other people who are working on their cars, uh, you know, pretty much every weekend here. So that definitely gives me some motivation to finish up uh, my own car as well. Um, we do have a lot of other things going on, obviously. Um, and I do have other cars that I have to take care of, but uh, it would be nice to uh, start to get this car going. Anyways, I'm going to uh, go ahead and at least rip off this tape, do a couple other little things. Um, I figured I'd put that at the end, so that way, um, you know, those who want to, you know, stick around and watch that stuff, you know, go for it. Um, if not, that is about it for this video. I appreciate everyone sticking around for this uh, long. I know it has been way, way, way too long, um, but I absolutely have every intention of finishing this car at some point. Anyways, I appreciate everyone for sticking around. Peace out. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.